Do you remember the odd ritual each year during that first sunny 70 degree day? It might start as a whine, can we have class outside? And build to a chant, class outside, class outside. Some teachers could quell the rebellion with a look. Others with, we just have too much to do today. Once a year, your English teacher, if you had the cool one, might cave and you discuss the day's short story sitting on the campus lawn. And it was as awesome as it was rare. Everybody do it right now. Everybody get your hands dirty. Come on, get your hands dirty. Nice job. But if you're a middle school science student at Limestone Community School in Northern Arista County, on most days, class will be outside. There's just too much to do and learn. There's gardens to create and maples to tap and nature walks. There's biking and canoeing and snowshoeing and nature just might become your second favorite teacher. After Miss Caroline and Miss Doucette. In this episode of Learning from Maine, we'll see how these teachers and this school have revolutionized class outside. Four years ago, Caroline Reed was a brand new middle school science teacher. She was paired with a veteran teacher who was also new to limestone. We both noticed right away that there was a severe issue with absenteeism and like overall student engagement. The behaviors and um, apathy, I think was, yeah, unsettling. One of her fifth graders, CJ, was typical. He would come to school and like have his head on the table when we were in the classroom. When we started bringing them outside, a lot of the issues would just go away. That success inspired Reed to want to do more. Three years ago, she applied for and received a $250,000 federal grant allowing the school to invest in recreational equipment from canoes to mountain bikes. They even built a small greenhouse. The grant made Reed's dreams for outdoor learning possible and catalyzed new ones. Now, in 2025, Caroline and her fellow middle school math and science teacher, Melissa Doucette, have put the outdoors at the center of their science curriculum. We get outside at least three times a week, even in the winter. Even in Aroostook County? You know, we, we look at at least six to eight weeks of cold weather, dark days, lots of snow and wind. Um, the only way to survive it, really, is to, is to embrace it. And our kids, they get, they get to embrace it. Caroline knows that meaningful learning can happen inside a classroom and often needs to. But now, she has a new frame when planning lessons. How can there be an outdoor component to what standards we are working on? They do sit down and we do like classic lectures, right? But then we go and apply that in some way where they get to go outside, get fresh air, move their bodies, and have a first-hand experience in what they have learned in the classroom. Sometimes it's obvious the outdoors should be center stage, like when Mr. Set's sixth graders are studying the rock cycle and there's a gravel pit nearby. Chase found a pretty cool rock. Okay, let's take a look at this rock. What do we notice about the white line that goes through it? Limestone scientists also head outside when you might not expect it, but when the learning can be lived and felt. Ms. Caroline's seventh graders applied their understanding of speed and velocity as their peers pedaled mountain bikes. Calculate your average speed for each five meter interval. Sometimes class is outside because being in the fresh air can make kids more relaxed and focused. You guys are also gonna measure the pH of your samples today. And other times, teachers and students just need to have fun together. The main reasons these kids learn outside are the longer term projects that center on learning key science concepts and providing a real service. I joined sixth grade scientists on the school nature trail to the bird sanctuary they'd created, complete with bird feeders, bird houses, and educational placards. And we will have some little visitors. I came back with one sixth grader named Ezzy to learn more about chickadees and science class. Why should we recognize the chickadee with the honor of being our state bird. It's it's it stays around, doesn't like fly south so, because uh, so it's not one of those fair weather birds who ditch the state. It sticks in Maine yeah, year round. Yeah. What do you think of science class? Science class, um, it's it's actually my favorite class. It's your favorite class. Yeah. Why is that? Because we get to go outside and our teacher, Miss Doucette, is the best. She's like the chickadee of teachers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
The eighth grade spent much of early 2025 learning the vast knowledge and skills necessary to make Maine maple syrup. This was all them. They knew how to boil, how to monitor our density and sugar content. They knew how to set up our evaporator. Remember that kid who always used to have his head on the desk, uh, CJ? Yeah. Well, check him out now. Schooling me on the syrup process from tree identification to tracking sugar content during evaporation. The three Bs are the bark, the branches, and the buds. The bark should have a brownish gray color and these deep ridges and, and valleys And the buds, there. like the little tips of the branches, should be like a reddish brown color. This was clearly not CJ's first syrup rodeo. Earlier this spring, he taught the process to second and fourth graders. An easy way to check the sugar contents is with a hydrometer. So you want it to have at least 67% sugar, or it's called 66 bricks, but it's just... So do you know this much about everything in life or just maple syrup? Just maple syrup. So do you guys remember when you came out to see the eighth graders making maple syrup in the evaporator? <laughs> The maple syrup unit culminated with the eighth grade welcoming younger students to a pancake breakfast. We boiled 200 gallons of sap. The eighth graders not only did all of the cooking and the serving, but they never stopped teaching. As satiated as their customers were, the deepest joy and pride was felt by the big kids who did all the work. Americans, on average, spend 90% of their lives inside. Tweens are not only getting outside less, they're spending five to six hours of their non-school time every day on screens. Outdoor learning can help reverse those trends, among other benefits. According to the Children in Nature Network, nature makes kids healthier, happier, and smarter, especially as at LCS when guided by great teachers. That connection with the dirt, that connection uh, with the earth is um, rejuvenating. It's refreshing, right? It's what we're supposed to be doing. LCS's biggest project this spring required the smarts, hearts, and hard work of all the students in grades five through eight, the community garden. Ms. Doucette's fifth graders use their geometry skills to figure out the garden's dimensions and location. LCS fifth grade is determining where our garden is going to be exactly. Pretty cool, right? The eighth graders were in charge of testing the soil and amending it as needed. Sixth grader Caleb gave me an overview of the plan. What we did last year is we planted all the carrots, the green beans, the peas, the peppers, and all that in these raised beds. And I'm pretty sure we're going to do that this year again. Right. Uh, last year we planted the potatoes right there, but I'm pretty sure we're going to move it to over there, that big patch, so we have more room to plant more. Caleb's family has been farming potatoes and limestone for two generations. His work in the LCS garden has helped to solidify his future plans. We try to take over one day. When it came time for planting, most every grade lended their hands. Seventh grader Serenity is a true convert to gardening. I've been starting my own garden at home. So before I never even thought of that, never even wanted to approach that. As part of the seventh grade focus on plant genetics and pollinator gardens, Serenity has been independently researching and cultivating a flower called borage. They are known for tasting like cucumbers with honey. Also, scientists have found some evidence that it might be able to cure some cancers. Serenity hopes to see her borage and bloom over the summer. She and some other classmates have volunteered to come in twice a week. So you're coming to school in the summer? Yeah, I don't mind. Caroline and Melissa started an outdoor club so their students could experience even more of the recreation and joy their region offers. Serenity tried both skiing and horseback riding for the first time, and now she's hooked. I want to be an equine vet. The reason why I want to become an equine vet is because uh, horses, they can be more of a challenge because they're extremely smart. After listening to Serenity, Caleb, and their peers, I was struck that these outdoor experiences were not just deepening their learning, but shaping these young people, refining who they wanted to become. Schools across Maine are coming to the same conclusion. During the pandemic, they had to go outside. Now, they're choosing to. In a recent census, more than half of our school leaders reported investing in outdoor learning spaces. And why not? Maine is uniquely well-suited for outdoor learning. At Limestone, eighth grade culminates with the class canoe trip down the Aroostook River. 
This spring, middle schoolers use the school's pool to learn canoeing skills. In the winters, Principal Ben Lothrop often takes his students on their first ice fishing trip or snowmobile ride. Principal Lothrop sees the school's innovations with outdoor learning and adventure as being crucial, not only for improving students' academics and attendance, but for limestone. Like many rural Maine towns, limestone is shrinking by about a third just since 2010. The K-8 population is now 150. We are teaching them to do things they will be able to do for the rest of their lives. So if we expose them to the types of things that are available to do, maybe they will consider staying. And let's be real, I said, how many of you come to school every day because of science? And there was not one student that didn't raise their hand in both of my classes. Outdoor learning can have a transformational impact on teachers too. I never thought that I was going to become a teacher. I get to be creative and I get to be outside. Honestly, I don't think I'm ever gonna leave here. Keeping great teachers happy and growing is one of a principal's most important tasks. So is attracting them. In 2019, Melissa Doucette was a longtime special ed teacher in Presque Isle when she tragically lost both her husband and infant son. Devastated, she left the teaching profession and took over her former husband's business. Two years ago, Principal Lothrop lured her back to teaching with the offer of a new start in a new field. Middle school STEM with a growing emphasis on outdoor learning. And now? There are many days that I wanted to put my head under a pillow and just grieve. And I said, you know what? You're going to garden all day. Get up and go play in the dirt. So I've found my happy place. So have the students of Limestone. Okay. So, um, what else do you want for your birthday? For my birthday? Yeah. Um, I need some more acne cream. <laughs> <laughs> you can aim higher in your birthday gift. CJ's dedication to syrup is even more amazing since CJ may be the only person in the history of the county to have suffered a syrup-related injury. I got maple syrup stuck in my eye. And we had to go to the ER because I got my eye glued shut. 